This video is going to show you how to maintain your silk press, why you shouldn't be wrapping your silk press if you want longevity, and the best nighttime routine for that silk press. You know what you came here for. Sit back and tune in for Aisha Talor. Yeah, yeah. What's up, y'all? Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Aisha Talor. I'm going to show you my least favorite methods of maintaining your silk press. The tools that you need to maintain your silk press, I honestly recommend an ion brush. Y'all, not all paddle brushes are the same. I thought that you could just get any old paddle brush at Walmart. No, this is an ion one. I'll put like what it means on the screen. I got it from Sally's and it just like, it helps me like have no frizz. It maintains my silk press like it's it's crazy there's like crazy stuff in here if you don't have an ion type of um, ceramic brush powder brush you need it if you want to maintain your silk press so if you want to maintain your silk press wrapping your hair is a no-go because one is you're just gonna sweat it out like literally wrapping it let me show y'all what I'm talking about no no don't wrap your hair. One, because when it when you then remove it in the morning, you get that like weird feeling near your scalp area, right? And then it just is a lay down, it gets puffy. Again, I sweat in my scalp, so I feel like when I'm wrapping it, it just doesn't get like it doesn't give what it's supposed to give when it falls down, you know? So if you're like me that likes a little bump to your silk press and want to maintain that, I highly recommend that you do one of these methods. Again, everyone prefers a different method, so do as you please. First one is flexi rods. It's like the old school one, right? So if you like bigger curls, grab the bigger ones. If you like tighter curls, of course, get smaller ones. So I'm going to show you real quick. You just need four big ones. So big ones. You'll put it in the middle like so and kind of wrap it around itself. Obviously, I'm not doing this super neat because I'm not going to sleep like this. You go like so and you go like so. And of course, if you want your curls to go backwards, you would curl it that way, right? So when I just did it, I went backwards. I went away from my face, right? And then I continue going that way. So that's the first method is flexi rods. The next method is super old school and it's super uncomfortable for me, but again, this may work for you, is traditional rollers. You will just create your part the same width as your roller, like that. Again, I'm doing this just super quickly, but, and then you would put your hand on the roller, like so, and then you would use a clip. Clip it on or the little pin things. I don't do rollers that much, so I don't really have those pin things anymore. But then you would just kind of just do it however you want. I know some people do all over their head. Or this is the third method is to do do a roller, two rollers here, right? You put the rest of your hair in a high bun, a very loose one. And then you put rollers, maybe like three or two, depending on your density of your hair. You put rollers. This method is not bad either. So like I said, you do two rollers in the front, so when it comes down, it falls really pretty. The hair is in a bun, and you put rollers on the ends, and when it drops, it's actually really pretty. I don't mind it. It's just that I like my curls to be more uniform, like a wave to the back. So I don't really like that method as much, but I did try it one day, and it wasn't bad. So this is another method as well. And this is also a cute method if you like to have some hair in the front and then your hair in the bun still curls, that's a good method. All right, so the next method is super simple. When your hair is already curly, um, for me right now, I was being lazy today and I didn't really, I was laying on my hair, but all you have to do is kinda, as if you're doing like a flat twist kinda, you just gather your hair like this and twirl it. And you can do a couple of things, right? You can kind of do like a loose bantu knot, but it's not gonna it's not gonna come out like a bantu. I actually did this the other night and I undid my hair and I was like, ooh, I like it. This method is probably for those nights where you're super tired and don't feel like doing the most. And you just wanna do something quickly, you just go boop, 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 boop. And you just put another scrunchie. I use satin scrunchies. And you go like that. Mind you, 
Um, it's about to be a week with the Silk Press and I have not applied any additional product, any serum, any oil to my scalp. I haven't done any of that. So make sure you're also not adding too much product to keep the flowiness of your Silk Press. So yeah, this is another method as well. If you like your curls to just be more on the bottom. If you like more curls at the top, you can obviously start twisting earlier. And then when you unravel it, it's actually really pretty. I did this the other night as well. It kind of keeps the... The existing curls. So that's another method to maintain your silk press. So the method that I like is obviously traditional pin curls. I feel like it's just the easiest to do um, and gives me the best curl in my opinion. So I just do really big sections. Again, I'm not using any additional products. Using my handy dandy brush that I really like. Y'all, you need to get your hands on this brush. I And I tested it out. I was like, why am I paying much more money for this brush? How is it better? Game changer, like, I was shocked. All right, so the way that I do it is I gather all my hair and I put it in between my fingers like this and I roll up. Like, okay, here we go. It takes a few tries, but you just roll it up and then create a pink curl. I know other people, and I use a little metal clip. You can use bobby pins too. I know other people form their pin curls differently. Like they go literally like this and they go like that or whatever the case. You can obviously do it like that however you do your pin curls best. Fool me once, fool me twice. When you're hiding things, might as well be loud. So then I also picked up this netted cap from the beauty supply store if i can find it on amazon or sally's i'll link it down below and i also use this to just keep everything in place and this is also my shower routine too i pin curl my hair before i get in the shower just so it's easier to put my shower cap on um or i just use a satin scrunchie shower now for those girlies that just is adamant about wrapping your hair to maintain the silk press I am mad at you it's totally fine just make sure you have a couple of things again a good brush um, a good paddle brush by the same ceramic paddle brush to keep the flyaways away and some type of wrapping net so we have this one we all know what this looks like you when you go like this when your hair is wrapped and then you go, boop. Just make sure you have one of those. Either this one or this one. It's the same concept. But one is obviously a little bit wider and netted. So just make sure you have one of these if you do decide to um, wrap your hair as your method of maintaining your silk press. So um, I will come back in the morning and show y'all how this kind of drops. Um, and I'll also tomorrow night show y'all another method that is actually really pretty too. My girls, pull up, I'm outside, waiting by the curb, too upset to drive, you get no money. We gon' get lit on this ride, I look too damn good to fight, don't expect me to... Again, you can do more curls if you see fit, if you find that, you know, better. Once you kind of rake it through, it kind of just falls. Where it's supposed to fall. My second favorite way to maintain my silk press is this heatless band that I got on Amazon. I will link it down below. It comes with everything that you need, such as the band, the comb, and two silk scrunchies. So you just attach it to your head. You can do a middle or a side part. And I like to make sure that it's even. And then you just wrap your hair around it. You can do it as tight or as loose as you want the curls. And then that's it. It's actually pretty comfortable to wear at night and sleep in. It's not as hard to sleep in like flexi rod. So I really do like this method as well. Don't prove me wrong, prove you right. My word is but we don't spit no
This hairspray, y'all, is bomb. It's called Sebastian Shaper Hairspray. I'll link it down below. It's not a really harsh hairspray that makes your hair sticky or hard to move. It's called Shaper for a reason. It's very flexible, doesn't leave my hair sticky, and I am still able to mold my hair, and my silk press lasts. My hair salon also uses this um, hairspray, and that's where I got it from, so y'all, I love it. But do you see how effortless these curls are? You can shake it out, brush it out if you want to. Um, but I also really like this method as well. But I keep everybody at a distance, distance, distance. If I build it, will y'all really come? All right, another way to maintain your silk press is using a dry shampoo. I know this is weird, I know it is. This is the one by Moroccan Oil. I got a small one just to try it out, but I am applying it to certain sections of my hair that is just a little bit oily and just rubbing it in like you would a traditional shampoo and then brushing it throughout your hair. Um, I will tell you my thoughts in the next day, um, how I feel about it, but this smells really good, so if you want to try it, you can get it from Sephora. I'll link it down below. So I just decided to throw this in here, y'all. I wasn't even being that serious about it. I saw this on TikTok, this girl using socks as uh, another heatless method to keep her silk press. So I decided to try it out. I just quickly threw it in here because it wasn't my favorite method by far. But if you like more of a spiral curl similar to a flexi rod, you can try this. It actually was very easy to sleep in and it was okay. It just wasn't my favorite method. I love my baby. With using this dry shampoo, my hair feels a lot lighter, like it's less oily and more bouncy. So that's a plus in itself. But yeah, so I think that wraps up this video. I showed y'all a whole bunch of ways to maintain your soap press, dry shampoo, different ways to set your hair and all that good stuff. Um, stay tuned if it's not out already. You can check here on my channel of how to even do your silk press. I ended up doing this one on my own. I know during this video y'all saw my hair have different colors, such as life. But I will catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like, leave a comment down below. Are you silk pressing this season? Were any of these helpful? Let me know. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. Peace. Thank you.